I've been making games pretty much by myself for the last four years and it's getting kind of lonely. That is why I decided to assemble a team of complete strangers. We never talk to each other and try to make a game together. We have three days to make a game with a theme. That's a lot of entities. Actually, this game jam we're doing is nine days long, but I discovered it late, so that's great. We're four days behind. To assemble my army of Rust programmers, I went to the Bevy Discord group and two strangers actually replied. I know absolutely nothing about these guys. Except this dude called Mini apparently is very active on the Bevy Discord group, so that's a good sign he probably knows Bevy. And then there's Coder Command who hasn't written a single line of Bevy code in his entire life. He does however seem to have a wide experience in other game engines and languages, so hopefully I don't need to hold his hand throughout this entire game yet. With the team assembled, we hopped into a Discord call. Hello there. Welcome nice to, to, see you. to the team. I have a lot of work to do. Yeah. What are you talking about? It's a game jam. It's not stressful. There's not a lot of work to do. Tantan's <laughs> gonna carry us. He knows Rust. We didn't have to do a single thing. You just sit back, relax. We got along really well right at the start, and the game design document I had made prior to inviting them seemed like a game idea we all could get behind. A roguelike dungeon crawler with different items and enemies, and the goal is to kill all enemies to progress to the next level. I know, very original and very groundbreaking game idea. I started working on player movement and shooting, Mini started on world generation, and Coder Commander started working on the camera. We all stayed in the voice chat whilst we worked, sometimes in silence, and sometimes we helped each other out. Uh, it's not pretty. <laughs> Doesn't have to be. It's so ugly, but but it works. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just lost looking at that. I don't even think I've seen it before. <laughs> Despite being the first time Coder Command used Bevy, he managed to do really good work independently using all the Bevy resources out there. That goes to show if you have experience in other game engines or programming languages, adapting to a new one isn't too difficult if the documentation is good and the Bevy documentation is phenomenal. Of course we helped each other out now and then, but it was amazing how independent everyone on the team was. After just a day of work, we almost had a game. This was an incredible start to a game jam. I just woke up and the gremlins have worked on some stuff while I've been sleeping, so it's going to be nice to just pull out the changes to see what's new in the game. Oh, wow, look at that poor big. And we can even toggle the debug stuff. Ah! It was amazing to wake up and have a bunch of different new things added to the game without me having to have done anything because the guys worked out throughout the night. I'll probably stay till 4 a.m. to get progress in this. 4 a.m.? Yeah, it's weekend, it's so you can do that. It's a game jam too. We all worked throughout the day and we all became experts in our own specific areas of the game. I did a lot of work on the player, I focused on combat mechanics, Mini worked on world generation, graphics, and built the enemy AI, Coder Command worked on the camera, tooling, key bindings, and project structure. Now there was one area of the game none of us really wanted to work on. The programmer's worst nightmare. UI programming. <laughs> And UI is like one of the one things I hate making. It's like I just like making UI pretty much more than everything else. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm the captain of this team. I can delegate this task to whoever I want. Who shall it be? Mini or Coder? As the generous captain I am, I took the responsibility to make the UI myself. Because I was the only one out of all of us who had any prior Bevy UI knowledge. I did UI stuff for many hours and it was not a lot of fun. Damn, they have been hard at work while I was asleep. He made a list of 13 things they have changed. Whoa, what is this? It looks amazing now. Okay, let's see what's new. What? Oh, what are these orbs? Right, they wrote something about the AI not working. Uh, okay, I'm watching. It just doesn't go back. Ah. <laughs> it's kind of like you're cutting down a tree. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> it's realistic. The deadline was getting closer and whilst Mini and Coder had fun times working on AI and polishing, I had the joy of UI programming. Yes, it works! The only problem is you can't drag from the equipment UI into the inventory. It would not be easy to do that with the current code. Uh... A core part of the game is that you can craft items from the resources you pick up. So we didn't only need an inventory with item dragging and equipment UI, we also needed crafting UI. Yay! 
Just to give you guys a taste of what I'm talking about, here's the crafting UI code. Of course, Bevy does not have an editor yet, so every single item in the UI I need to create programmatically. And there's a thousand different things we can set to get the behavior we want. Let me know if you guys want a code breakdown of this entire project, not just the UI stuff. There's a lot of cool stuff in this project, so let me know if you're interested. The last day we didn't have much energy left in the tank. We already had the working game loop, the only major thing that was left was to finalize crafting. I needed to make a crafting recipe for every single item in the game. Which sure, all of this is a pretty cool game mechanic, but we didn't have any time or energy to balance any values. This spear item takes one rock to craft? Wow. This headgear takes one rock to craft? Wow. Can you guess what the next item requires? Yeah. Same goes for equipment. There are some cool effects on some of the equipments, but this game is not at all balanced. Some weapons are simply overpowered, some do pretty much exactly the same thing, and a few items doesn't even do anything at all. Also, tracking down enemies or finding the exit of the level isn't obvious to the player, and, and it's not fun just to walk around looking for things. But considering we made all of this in about three days, I think we got a lot of stuff done. Maybe if we had nine days to work on this, player choices and strategy would look a lot different. But despite all of this, the game is still pretty fun and challenging. Both Mini and Coder Command did a really good job with the enemy variety and the behavior. I'm overpowered. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> you said I'm overpowered and then you instantly walk in. <laughs> yeah. Also to find the exit. <laughs> Working in a team of complete strangers turned out to be a really fun experience. We could bounce ideas to each other, and there was also an extra level of motivation because the work I did affects two other people. So I had a great experience working with complete strangers, and I think I want to do that in future games as well. Go play the game, link down in the description, and a big shout out to my patrons for making this channel possible. A special thanks to Jehamultonks, Isse, Drifio, Painzer, Raisin, David Klosterman, Terpsicora, Turbo Waffle, Garrett Stefan, Afax, Sandwich, Ledo, Default Day.